Hey Fragheads and Fragrance Lovers, welcome back. It's Benjamin here at the Centaur Fragrance Channel talking about some beautiful fragrances again. We're going to dive into the house of Tio Cabanel, guys. This is a beautiful French house. They've been around for a little while. They have some real winners and some real beautiful fragrances. They were super generous with me to actually send me over a discovery set, so thank you Tio Cabanel. And uh, I have, you know, it's always exciting to try some new fragrances. And this frag the fragrance house does some really beautiful things really, really well. First off, the fragrances are light and kind of wearable, but they are parfum concentration. So I wanted to say that before we even jump into the fragrances, before we even jump into the notes or anything like that, this this house is, has a really nice balance of things. If you like Galivant, if you like Byredo, if you like a fragrance that, that, that's long lasting, it has a nice presence, but it's not shouting, it's not overbearing, it's not really loud. Trust me, guys, if you like Beast Mode fragrances, I'll be making a video for you guys, but these are definitely on that approachable side of things. And um, I wanted to showcase my favorite from the new releases of Tio Cabanel. And, uh, at, but, you know, the first as we explore this fragrance house here. And this is Genesis Qua. Guys, this is a beautiful a puffed rice fragrance. It feels like an ex extremely luxurious, extremely high quality like Rice Krispies or puffed rice cereal. Um, there's a beautiful tea and a, and a green matcha powder, so it's a little bit dry, but yet sometimes it has a little, these tiny sweet nuances, but yet it's green and yet it's fresh, but yet again, it's dry and to some people maybe powdery, but it's really not a powdery fragrance at all. Beautiful fragrance, very interesting, uh, but yet wearable, kind of creamy as well. I love Genesis Qua. It's my favorite from the fragrance house, but I'm about to show you all the all-time favorite from the house that everybody seems to adore. But again, if you're trying out this house, the, I'm going to showcase my three biggest favorites from the house that I think you need to try out because I know time is limited. I know t people tend to have short attention spans and people want to know the best of the best was the best fragrance uh, from these houses, even with a discovery set, even though you tuned in to hear and explore a whole fragrance house. Uh, Genesis, I'm going to just showcase the ones that I think, you know, you might really, really love first. So Genesis Qua, really gorgeous fragrance, a little bit more complex from the house if you want something more interesting, and it's called Genesis Qua for a reason. Uh, so the next one is, uh, you know, it's not the Trace French, even though I know some of y'all like that one. It's, uh, we will talk about the Barcane here in a second, but um, it's, guys, we got to talk about none other and Cafe Cabanel. This is the darling child of the brand. This is the one everybody talks about. If you're curious about why I'm even smelling, I'm not spraying these fragrances, is because I just sprayed these. I'm kind of smelling the dry down on, uh, you know, onside the boxes, and I love to do that, uh, so I don't have to waste a bunch of paper, and it can kind of the smell can kind of stay with the fragrance. So. It's a beautiful, um, you know, it's called a coffee, cafe fragrance for a reason. You get some beautiful coffee, and the, this fragrance has a beautiful rose. There's some vanilla a little bit in the background. There's a certain richness to this fragrance, very well balanced, uh, very charming as far as a coffee fragrance. There's There aren't a lot of coffee fragrances that everybody knows. There's Coffee Break by Marcel Margiela, and there's not a whole lot of coffee fragrances that just focus on it. And some of them are quite aggressive. This makes uh, coffee and to a much more wearable direction. There's Boissimo, uh, which I absolutely adore by Solani Hildi. Absolutely gorgeous fragrance, but that one is a Lucky Scent exclusive. Uh, this one is really great too. Uh, it's just charming and ro the rose is so well blended and I know a lot of ladies love rose So this brings rose into less of a ladylike or some people might say mature territory and brings it to more of a gourmand wearable Playful almost territory, but yet it's not too heavy. It's not too dark. It's not too sweet it has a really nice balance of things So I think that's I think that's why cafe Cabanel does so well a lot of people love Montal uh, You know intense cafe uh, which is kind of like a you know rose heavy as well, but this one's a little bit richer, a little bit more seductive. Uh, to me, Intense Cafe has a certain cleanly soapiness almost with that Montal DNA. It's a little bit more loud, and especially with the rose, this one has a really nice richness to it. So Cafe Cabanel, an absolute stunner. A lot of guys and ladies and gents, especially if you're a gourmand lover, uh, this is the darling child of the house, and everybody seems to be going gaga crazy for this one <laughs> for a reason. So let's jump to another one. Let's talk about Oh La La. Guys, this is a gorgeous fragrance. Not a gourmand fragrance. Honestly, it, um, it, it has some saffron to it. It has a lot of saffron. Actually, a surprisingly 
a lot of saffron. This fragrance also has a, a signature woodiness about it. Almost not the same. It doesn't smell exactly like Haitian vetiver, but it almost has this dry, airy woodiness about it. It's kind of uh, clean, but yet sophisticated. And it's, it just has a certain prestige about it. Now, it's not trying to be the most luxurious and fancy fragrance of all time. But, you know, Oh La La really brings this uh, this wearable, clean, and fancy, and French, almost like almost like a French luxury bar of soap to the fragrance game. But it's not it's not exactly soapy. There's more to it. There's a certain richness and, again, that woodiness to this fragrance that really makes this fragrance stand apart. Again, it also has a lot of the core aspects of a gourmand fragrance without the sweeter elements. Uh, so this is almost an anti-gourmand in its own interesting way. It has a lot of the backbone and a lot of the structure of what you would think is a gourmand, but it doesn't have any, again, of the sweeter, the richer, and the heavier notes. Uh, so it's kind of interesting uh, in that way. So that might be also really fascinating uh, for some of you fragrance lovers out there. So oh, oh La La, great fragrance. I know that some people, that's their favorite from these. A really great fragrance. Let's jump to the next one here. This is called Barcane. Guys, this is uh, for you woody, uh, cedar, vetiver loving guys. This is their gentleman's fragrance, in my opinion, out of the list, um, the, you know, for the guys, again, who like that classic woody type of DNA. Really nice fragrance, very well balanced. Uh, I, I think the, the vetiver really is great here. Has a nice presence and uh, a sensual muskiness and a, a, just a really nice balance of things. It's not, it's never overtly woody or overtly heavy. Um, I know that some ladies actually like this fragrance and so it's not, a, it's not a scary woody fragrance. It's not heavy or dark or inky or anything like that or too dry or spicy. It's, um, it's just got a really nice blend of things. It's a comforting woody fragrance. Very almost sensual as far as woodiness goes. So try Barcane. It's quite a nice fragrance. Really, really well done. Um, so suffice to say, those are my favorite ones that I would recommend. The biggest top hitters out of the house. Um, you know, let me know how much detail and which ones you want to see a review of. Again, this is a first, uh, kind of a second impression video, but it's also an introduction to the house of Tio Cabanel. So I want to do this house justice. Let me know which ones do you want to see a review of. This one is called Lace Garden, a very, um, almost like a soapy clean fragrance, but yet it has a certain cottony feel to it. That's why it's called lace. So imagine white lace in a garden. It has a certain dewiness. It has a very, it smells like a spring fragrance. Uh, very, very uh, clean. Um, again, there's not a lot of clean, soapy fragrances for the ladies out there. And uh, this is one that I think that would be suit a, a lady very, very well. Um, ha again, has a spring quality about it. Like, uh, you know, like the snow's melting and the little, uh, the little, uh, the green, like the saplings and the little sprouts are popping out of the ground. Um, reminds me of that a little bit. Lace Garden is quite charming, so check it out. It's, um, you know, if you want something kind of simple and uh, fresh and sophisticated. So another one is that is a pretty strong release uh, from the house is uh, this one called Mellow. And uh, it has this interesting, almost cantaloupe-like quality. If you don't know what cantaloupe smells like, it's um, it's a certain green, like dewy melon type of smell. Doesn't smell exactly like watermelon, but it's a uh, this one's quite refreshing. It's quite uh, it's quite likable. It's um, it's it's just something that you want to wake up to, or you just want to smell in the morning. It really wakes you up in a beautiful way. And, um, you know, Mellow is quite a little charming fragrance. And uh, I think that if you like those really simplistic citrus fragrances or really simplistic fruity fragrances, that this one also will do you very well. Also has a little bit of a young green, tender green kind of quality about it, but uh, very wearable, not uberly sweet, but uh, probably leans a little bit on the fruity side. Uh, but uh, very well balanced, again, uh, Mellow. That's a good fragrance. Uh, Kazar here. Um, this one is really interesting. I compared this one uh, to, you know, sitting next to kind of like um, kind of like sitting at like a luxury hotel. Imagine you're sitting at a luxury hotel and you're getting a little uh, next to the ocean. So you're getting a little bit of that ocean smell, but you're also getting a little bit of the poolside. Smells again to me like a like uh, like blue plastic, like uh, you know you're playing on some rafts or some big plastic toys, so you can float on the ocean or like a river. A little bit of a cold water type of smell, perhaps a little bit of that. Very clean, very easy to wear. As far as aquatics go, it's it's pretty well balanced. Again, for the price, I don't know if I find it terribly exciting, honestly, but it's a really nice fragrance nonetheless. It's um, pretty well balanced. 
Wish I had something more interesting going on. But uh, Kazar, as far as a blue aquatic fragrance goes, uh, pretty well balanced. And uh, for if you don't want, if you want to wear something that's not too fussy or very wearable, I think you would like that one. I do think that Kazar is not the same, but it does lean perhaps a tiny, tiny bit. Again, it's not it's not a clone, but perhaps it might remind you a tiny, tiny bit of Sauvage in the background. Again, with that kind of blue and ambergris kind of smell to it. Perhaps a, this one has a, perhaps a tiny bit of uh, a ghost, uh, you know, of its shadow past, of a little tiny bit of a shampoo vibe to uh, Kazar. So a lot, probably, you know, one for the younger gentleman, kind of playful. The next one here is Trace French. Um, this one uh, I think is more would just be described as it's a kind of an interesting blend of things. It's kind of a Shepra, but it doesn't smell animalic or aldehydic or overtly flowery or animalic, but it does kind of have a little bit of that edge, but it's more of an aromatic fragrance. It's more of a citrus fragrance, more of a vetiver, fra vetiver fragrance. Very classy, very timeless fragrance, Trace Fresh here. A lot of people really like this one. I do respect it. I do think it's a good aromatic, aromatic fragrance. I do think it leans a little bit towards the side of uh, Egoist, um, you know, the famous Egoist or Platinum Egoist, and uh, but it's not the same. It does its own thing a little bit. So not a bad fragrance. Um, again, I personally feel like I've smelled something similar to that one before, the Trace French but um, not a bad fragrance at all, quite classy, quite timeless. Um, the next fragrance is called Jaspe. Now this fragrance to me um, smells, again, a little bit clean, a little bit sophisticated. Uh, again, I said the other one smelled a little bit like a hotel. Um, this one, it reminds me of, a, I don't know, of like a mini golf course. It's really funny away. So again, I'm getting this... Um, this this textured like fake lawn this like you know fake uh, grass kind of quality about this fragrance there's a little bit of green like an aquamarine quality to this fragrance but it's very well blended it, again it's very soft and very wearable very presentable um nothing to overtly marine or salty or ozonic very safe very inoffensive as far as an aquatic goes uh but again it's not a bad fragrance it's uh but Honestly, to me, I almost would want to wear something like Bulgari Aqua, uh, not Aquamarine, but Bulgari Marine more than this, but it's not a bad fragrance, and uh, I do get something a little bit salty in the background, but again, never too uh, ozonic or ambergris-like, but it's it's nice. Jaspe, not a bad fragrance, a little bit simple, perhaps. Uh, this one is called Hegoya. This is a this also is a little bit aquatic and mass appealing but blends in perhaps a little bit of a uh, a little bit of florals into it and also they even put that on the side of the decant in the bottle here those look like uh dandelion uh, you know the they float in the little seeds they float in the air people tend to blow them that's kind of a famous thing and uh this hegoya it's nice uh, perhaps a little bit of an aquatic that ladies might like more. A little bit has a tiny bit of sourness to it. Does have a little bit of floral, almost out of hit it quality, just a touch in the background. Again, a fragrance house. These are all very well balanced. And um, again, a kind of a sourness and an aquatic, citrusy, bright, happy. Again, ladies, you might want to try this one from the house. It's um, it's nice, but again, I find it kind of simple for what you're paying. If you're going to go out of your way to buy a French fragrance and uh, get into this fragrance house. Um, again, I, sh I showed the ones that I think are the most interesting up front first. And again, some of these are kind of simple, but again, some people want things that are easy to wear and effortless and they don't want to think about it, but yet they might also want something French and something a little bit higher quality. So again, these are all parfum concentrations, a little bit closer to the skin performance wise, but they do last pretty well. Um, early Rose here. Um, uh, a classic uh, rose again this is a young tender red rose uh, a budding rose this isn't a very mature or dark red rose or it doesn't have anything lipsticky about it it doesn't have anything dark about it this is a very fresh rose and actually even though it's kind of simple it doesn't change a lot it doesn't have anything that really uh, i don't know piques my curiosity as, i guess as a fragrance enthusiast or aficionado um this fragrance is a pretty good rose i don't you know there are good rose fragrances out there 
but again the ones that fo uh, focused on have focused on rose i haven't smelled a lot of fragrances that really uh kind of are wearable and layerable and um you know could do a really good job of being a rose focused fragrance and uh there are some fragrances that happen to come across rose dominant but again i don't come across a lot of fragrances that are just rose in the name and rose focus there is rose all day by gallagher fragrances which i know a lot of ladies like but um this one very soft and inoffensive if you do want something kind of sim very simple and effortless and you do like rose also worth checking out uh this one called oha was one that kind of confused me Honestly, it didn't make sense to me. It's um, it's a little bit dark. Um, it's a little bit incense-y. Reminds me of pomegranate a tiny bit. It's trying to be almost one of those dark labdanum, uh, almost slightly smoky fragrances, but yet, you, you know, more for the ladies, a little bit uh, of like a almost... I don't think there's plum in this fragrance, but maybe that's what they were going for, like a dark, seductive, more of like a mature, uh, fruity fragrance, maybe for the ladies. So, nice fragrance, Oha. Um, again, I do think that if you like, uh, I, I, there's a brand called Habibi out there. It's called like, uh, I think it's called First Glance. I've smelled something, I've smelled a couple fragrances out there that smell similar to this. But again, it's a fragrance DNA that not everybody's familiar with. So, eh, not bad fragrance. Really not bad, but uh, nothing to me terribly exciting. Uh, you know, some of you ladies might have liked um, me to mention this fragrance earlier in the video. Uh, because I do think a lot of ladies will like this one. But again, this is a very safe fragrance, very bright. This one's called Julia. And uh, there's a little bit of this. Um, it reminds me almost a little bit of like a raspberry cocktail or, you know, one of those fancy little cocktail drinks that ladies would drink with a lot of fruit juice in it with like grapefruit and, uh, you know, bright pink fruits and maybe a little bit of a it doesn't smell terribly sweet, but it has a little bit of that nuance and maybe a little nuance of something like strawberry in the fragrance. Uh, Julia is very playful, very likable, and um, I think that a lot of ladies will love Julia if they give it a chance. But again, to me, it's more of an everyday fragrance, but it's very charming. It's very almost, it's not girly, but it's it almost has this very feminine, timeless quality about it. If it was any sweeter, it's kind of like a girly fragrance without the sweetness, if that makes sense. Or a, lot, a very small amount of sweetness. A little bit soft around the edges, a little bit uh, with some musk in the background, very sensual. Um, I really, um, I actually like this fragrance. If a lady would uh, would wear this, I think it would be charming for an everyday fragrance. Um, again, uh, we'll talk about the price here in a second for these fragrances, but um, actually surprisingly good prices on these fragrances. Uh, this is called Alahine or Alahine. Um, this one, uh, kind of hard for me to describe. This one's a little bit more powdery, probably the powderiest of the bunch. I usually don't go for that. Maybe that's why I saved it to last or for last. Um, it's It's got this rose quality, but it's also got this crushed quality about it, almost like a dried cranberry, not very sweet. Reminds me a little bit. It has this almost like um, airy quality about it that I'm not exactly sure what's going on. It's almost minerally in the background. It's almost got this playful, I guess that's where Alahine's coming from. It's got this interesting blend of uh, mountain air almost and almost like a dried cranberry. So interesting fragrance. Again, there are notes to these fragrances. I wanted to keep this a very simple uh, video for you guys. I'm gonna be doing full length reviews of these fragrances in time. Uh, but let me know which ones should I review, which ones are worth giving the time and the effort. I will include the website down below so you can check out this house. I don't know if the prices, all the fragrances will stay this this uh, price, but uh, most of these fragrances are around $100, 100 uh, it might be euros, but around $100. And um, I think the price is very reasonable for, again, 20% around. Most of these are pretty high concentrations. Um, and I, I do think that uh, some of them are quite gorgeous. Again, the first three I mentioned, uh, ca especially Cafe Cabanel, uh, Je ne sais quoi, and, uh, you know, Oh La La are quite nice from the house. Again, if I was to recommend any that you certainly have to try, it would be Cafe Cabanel, uh, Je ne sais quoi, and, you know, maybe one of these really fresh ones. Maybe you really would really like Julia. Maybe uh, if you're a, a younger, you know, younger lady watching my channel or something, you just want something playful and timeless and just feminine. Uh, Barcane is a great woody fragrance, but yet very wearable for the gentleman out there. Mellow smells like melon, uh, but a, in a really good way. And uh, 
there's there's a number of these that are pretty darn good for what they do and um anyways i hope that i did this brand justice hope that you liked me introducing this fragrance house to you uh these are very french in style but uh, modern french perhaps not i don't know if these lean classically french but uh, I, I think that they do it did a pretty good job as far as french fragrances go um having a little bit of their own interesting style again french love to use their florals and love to use um, you know freshness and brightness uh, you know of the florals to really brighten up the fragrances and they have a, a certain laid back uh, quality about them but yet also a little bit classy but not too posh not too in your face but yet still have a certain type of certain a uh, refinement to the feeling of the fragrances so again guys i hope that you're doing fantastic out there let me know how i did in this video again if you would like let me know if you'd like me to bring out all the details and read you all the notes if I read you every single note of all these fragrances, I feel like the video would be 30 minutes long. And um, I don't know if that would do these justice. And I'm going to review these fragrances anyway. So I hope that you enjoyed these fra this video here. Again, I haven't tested all of these fragrances. And you could probably tell by the video I haven't dived in and, uh, and you know really understood all of these fragrances exactly. But I'm going to. And I hope that you enjoy fra uh, exploring fragrances with me. And I hope that you are having a wonderful day. So, um, you know, let me know if I did a good video with this, uh, a good job with this video. And um, I'll catch you later, everybody. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share the video, and tell a friend to support me here and uh, grow this channel. I'll see everybody. Have a beautiful day. I'll catch you in the next video. I upload very regularly, just about every day. I'll see you next time, everybody. Peace out and bye.